So this is one of those moments that um, we don't often talk about, and that is how, like, the deceiver likes to get in the way. Uh, I feel miserable. I can't breathe. I haven't slept. Yay. And then, of course, the slide thing doesn't work. But um, would anyone want to pray for us? Pray for me? Kind of. Yeah. Dear God, thank you for this day. Please help us to have a great day and that no one gets hurt and help those in Ukraine to feel better. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. So there's something I learned a long time ago is that... Um, you should always have an answer for the joy that you have in your heart. And so if someone asks you to pray, it's not a big deal. It's not a freaky thing, right? You're just having a conversation with God. Chapman. So, upcoming stuff. House rally this afternoon. So when you come in, the flags will be out, and you'll sit in your house area. I got some nice Christmas tree stands for the house flag, so we're really moving on up. The other piece of this announcement is that the high school has created a spiritual formation track. So they've been working on engineering. They've got biomedical. There's a school of music. Now they're adding this spiritual formation. And so your Bible teachers will show you a video about that with the Bible teachers talking about it. But to me, it's a cool thing because the thing that I've always wanted here is for us to give you opportunities to be tapped on the shoulder by God, even at your age, that you're like, man, I think I want to be a missionary. I think God's calling me to youth ministry. I think I really love doing prayer, and maybe I'm a preacher. And I don't think we give you guys opportunities like that. And so I think this is a cool thing for high school if any of you kind of have an interest. And so even sixth graders sitting here, as you kind of go through these next couple years, that might be something that you're interested in. So then we have World Down Syndrome Day, and if you've never done it at Combs, I don't know, did we do it last year? But we do this crazy sock thing. So that'll be on this year. But it's March 21st. We're going to be involved in that. You can wear your Providence shirt if you have one. If you ordered a new one or if you've got an old one, you can wear that with the craziest socks you have. And then at each floor, we kind of step out in the hall at the end of the day and have this little, um, in the 50s, they used to call it the walk, where people line up. It's kind of like a gauntlet, and then you kind of dance through with your crazy socks, and we have winners. Everybody likes to win. All right, so our Providence gang, who we love and cherish, uh, the seven of them this year in Calms, we're going to celebrate with them World Down Syndrome Day. So, um, Mr. Barnett asked me to talk to you, and as I said, I haven't slept all week, um, which then that means my wife really hadn't got to sleep all week, and then she was sick last week, and she didn't sleep, that means I didn't sleep, so I'm good for about two weeks. Um, I need a nap. But he asked me to talk about politics. Doesn't that sound exciting? <clears throat> so, um, I'm the principal, right? So, the principal has, you know, there's perks. So, if the spiritual life director says, talk about politics, then I don't really have to, right? But I am, in a way. But I wanted to start with this, because I... If you don't, if you haven't heard my heart for you and for this school, for my own kids, 
And this is, this is near and dear to me because I have a 31-year-old son that grew up in a Christian home, going to church, youth group, and now he couldn't be further from God. So I put this up here because this is my prayer for you is that, you know, think about eighth grade, how many chapels you've sat through. Think about how many Bible classes that you've been through. And if you're a lifer, then you can add on extra years to that. And my concern is, is that we have all this knowledge. We know all these stories. But we really don't get it. And that the world wins more than God wins in our own lives, in our own decisions. The stuff that I see come through the office every day. That's a bummer to me. That's very disappointing to me. But then the positive side, the thing that keeps me coming back, the thing that keeps your teachers coming back, is that is a small minority. There's a bunch of you that do it right every day. And I'm so thankful for you. And you don't get enough praise. So hear it from the principal today. I am so thankful for your heart and the things that you do that you would stand up. Pray for the school. See, that's my heart for you. And some of you don't get it. And I can't make you get it. That's a bummer. So please, when you're older, don't forget the stuff that you've learned. Eighth graders, you go to high school, don't forget the stuff that you've learned. Sixth grade, when you go to seventh, don't forget the things that you've been taught. And then when you go to college, don't forget the things that you've been taught. That connect your head to your heart so that they come out in your life. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today because we live in this world, there is politics, there are protests, there's all kinds of stuff we argue about and we fight about. So, unbelievable as I was thinking about my slides, and so yesterday, four seventh graders are running down the hall after lunch playing tag. You know what I said to them? Guys, you're not in third grade. You're not children anymore, right? You guys don't want to be treated like children, do you? Then what do adults say? What do we tell you? You've heard it. Stop acting like one. Right? Take the things you've learned. You're no longer children. Sixth graders. We're in March. Eighth grade, you're three months away from going to high school. You're no longer children. So, we've been talking about barriers, the way people treat us, social media, all the, the, the barriers to having community. And so, politics is one of those things that separate us. I wanted to go bigger than that. I wanted to think about a biblical worldview that you should be learning in your classes, right, in chapel, versus the secular worldview. So you think about what are some things that the world wants to separate us on? Well, these last three years, there's been tons, right? Right? We saw it here in our own city. Protests, fires, people that hate police, People that love police. There's good police, there's bad police. We're all, right? We're all born with this sin. So people do bad things. We brought it to school. It tried to come to school with, you know, Democrat, Republican, Independent. Do I wear a mask? Do I not wear a mask? Do I get vaccinated? Do I not get vaccinated? All those things try to separate us. But you know what? God created all of us with diversity. But that diversity is not meant to separate us. How boring would it be if every insect looked the same? 
but we have really cool insects, right? Have you guys ever seen a walking stick? You ever watched a praying mantis? Butterflies that ha look like they have eyes on the back of them. I mean, that, that's all cool stuff that one creator made and said, this is good, and then the world tries to split us apart. And so there are all kinds of things like that in the world that try to separate us. I want you to hear me in that we are made in the image of God, right? We should celebrate the diversity by unity, by coming together in one spirit, in Christ. But what does the world tell you? I'm waiting on some guys that are having trouble. What's the world tell you? It's all about me. My decisions are all based on me. What do I feel? What do I need? It's all about me. But if we really think about our creator that created each one of us unique, right? Except for the twins in here. You look around, nobody else looks just like you. There's no one in here that looks like me. Does that mean I'm weird? Does that mean you should shun me? Should you put me off on a corner? No. We should celebrate God's creation. Bring us together in unity. Can I have a different viewpoint than you and still love you? Yeah. Is murder a good thing? I was watching the news last night and two parents killed their four-year-old daughter. Is that a good thing? No, that's terrible. Do we hate those people? No, we don't hate those people, but we certainly hate the behavior, right? You see, God didn't create any mistakes. Not a single mistake has been made in this room. We are different, right? But we can be unified in Christ. And the world would tell you, don't do that. That's not good. Believe like I do. Separate yourself from everyone else. Because there is truth, right? Where do we find God's truth? In his word. Right? So if you want absolute truth, go to his word. God created and said it was good. Look around. There's a lot of goodness in here. Secular view, the world view, it's all relative. It's all about me. If I want to burn something up, I'm going to burn something up. We live in the greatest society that's ever been created. So I talk about it a lot. Because the reality is, you live with social media, right? You live with people that um, today's it's bullying, where they're mean, right? You know, you, you find something and you post it so that someone's hurt. That's thinking about me. We should be, biblical worldview, thinking about others. I would never do that. If I know it's going to hurt someone, I would never do that. I would never shun someone and not let them sit with me at lunch. But we do it. Right? It's done. We're living in the world, but we're not to be of the world. Okay, so I, want, I found this, and um, it just, to me, it, it hits it on the head perfectly. And it, it's short. How can we get Christians to be more engaged, involved in culture, in Christ-honoring ways? I think one of the things we have to do is go back and ask ourselves, what does it mean to be made in the image of God? And what stewardship responsibilities has God entrusted to us in this world? What does it mean to 
to rule, to have dominion. Uh, this is what God called the first human beings to do and calls all of us to do it today. It might be a very small area of influence, our own families, it might be business, it might be education, it might be going to school, it might be involved in a little league team or coaching or whatever it might be. And, and how do you bring Christ to those areas of life? Well, first of all, you have to know that God has called you to this and that this world is good. There's worldliness that's sinful, um, so that's they being uh, of the world, uh, end of things. But there's, there's just being in the world, the fact that God has made us to engage with other people. If we're going to get the gospel to other people, we need to be able to relate to them and engage with them. Uh, it, in my own case, uh, I coached high school tennis for years. Uh, this was a platform for sharing the gospel, for building the kinds of relationships that established myself with unbelievers, kids, their parents, all of that. I think if we just see the world as our mission field and not become paranoid about well, in order, you know, because I'm called to be holy, I have to stay away from things like sports and barbecues and movies and arts and concerts and culture. No, God has called us to be salt and light, to get out there, but all the time, never using those things as an excuse for compromising my basic doctrinal beliefs and my personal values and ethics. I'm representing Christ wherever I go. But in order to represent him, I have to be out there where real people live. And they're never going to hear the gospel unless many of us are truly engaged with culture. So, um, I'll be honest with you, I'm old. I've retired once already. And there's times I think when I watch the world, I just, I want to just go to an island. And then I think about what God has really called me to do, and that's not what he wants me to do. He doesn't want me to go hide. If I say I'm one party and someone else is another party, and I don't run from them, I want to have a conversation with them. I don't shun them because they don't think like I do. And my whole thing is trying to get them to have the same belief in Jesus that I do. And I can't do that separate from them. I had a speaker tell me one time that God wants to use your, the way you talk, the way you look, the clothes that you wear, right? Because those are going to be like other people around you. He wants to use those to share the gospel with those people. You are his hands and feet. Of course, you have to have that yourself first. And we assume a lot in this room. So we're into March. And I, and I really have this thing in my heart that like we should do, we should really share the gospel with you just flat out what it means. For those of you that I know in your interview, you said you hadn't made a decision for Christ yet. Others of you did it a while ago and maybe you've been doing things that aren't so good and you're thinking, hmm, maybe I didn't really, when I confess my, with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, Maybe I didn't really believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. So for me, and I hope for you, as we finish this year out, three months, my dream school would that be that Mr. Matthews would have no work to do. That the stuff he's been dealing with the last two days, there'd be none of that. Because it's all decisions, worldly decisions, that have been made by our students and that we don't turn our head. We have to deal with them. And then when you make decisions, there are consequences based on those decisions. 
So if we had more of a biblical worldview, if it was more about Christ, if every decision I made was more about Christ and not about fitting in, not about some barrier to communicate to community, you would never have to look over your shoulder again. Those of you that know what that feels like, that's a good feeling. To do what's right each day and never have to worry about some Mr. Matthews coming to the room to get you. Some of you do. He comes into the room and you're like, oh no. What'd I do? If we thought less about ourselves, if we were selfless, we'd have a greater community. We would all be one, unified in Christ. And those things that we have different opinions about, we can just agree to disagree, but it doesn't mean we hate each other and we shun each other like Democrats and Republicans often do. Right? You saw it in the State of the Union. Democratic president says something great. Who stands up? Democrats, who's sitting down? Republicans. Four years ago, same thing. Republican president, Republicans stand up, Democrats sit down. Why can't we just be one country under God the way it was created? So you guys have an opportunity to change that. You realize that? You are the future. That's why we've focused so much on community because our community is trashed in this world. I hope some of you are excited about that because maybe you'll be the next representative or senator. And really go back to truth and not just how you feel and what other people say. So here it is. I shared this with the staff. This one has been drilling me for the last about 10 days. I read it in a devotion. My devotion has two questions at the end of each one. Here it is. So I want you to use this as you go through decisions today. And I want you to think about this and answer this question before you decide to do something today. So the things that I say today, the things that I do today, what am I telling God? in each one of those decisions? Am I saying, Lord, thank you for your awesome creation. Thank you for the uniqueness, but thank you for the community that we have here at Combs. Thank you for our teachers. Or, are you going to do what you want to do? Are you going to do what the world would tell you to do? Are you going to do what your friend might get you to do, dare you to do? You know it's wrong. So I have to ask myself, am I saying, God, I love you, or God, I couldn't care less? You sent your son to die on a cross. Can you imagine that? The agony of that, being nailed to a cross for you, for me. And yet we think we have it so bad. Okay? Some of you will do that. And it will help you make better decisions. Others, I can't make you do any of that. I can only provide opportunities. But I love you. You are loved. I pray for you. I hope you will. I hope when you leave this place at some point in college, you think, man, I remember chapel. Those were awesome. Cool? Let me pray for you. Father, um, I say it every morning, but you are such an awesome God. And you've created this creation with uniqueness and diversity, but yet you call us to be unified in your Son. You call us to share that with each other. Lord, I pray for these young people as they grow up that their decisions are based more on a love for you and a less on the love for themselves. What a great community that would be. So Lord, you can help us do that. There are teachers here that can help us do that. 
There are friends here that can help us do that. But the world says, ah, no one's going to know. You can send out that text. You can say those mean things. We'll just gang up on that person because we don't like them. They look different than us. But you have a different plan for us. So, Lord, I, I just pray for them to think today and then get up tomorrow and think, What's the next right thing to do? And then the next day, the next right thing to do for the rest of their lives, depending on you. Because you are dependable. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.